Welcome to Roadcase, the podcast that explores the live music experience. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Josh Rosenberg, and I'll be taking you on a journey through in-depth interviews with performers and key people in the industry to explore the magic of live music, how it can be totally transformative for both fans and performers, and we'll look at how they take it all out on the road. It's going to be a great ride, so here we go. Okay, welcome back to Roadcase. This is your host, Josh Rosenberg. Thanks for joining me for this episode. It's a great one, and we got tons of episodes coming up, so stay tuned for those. I'd like to thank all of you again for joining me and for supporting Roadcase. If you'd like to support Roadcase, you can do so in a number of ways. We have a Patreon site uh, at patreon.com slash roadcasepod where you can get early access to episodes and some other goodies. So go and check that out if you can. And you can follow us on social media and support us that way. Uh, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The handle is at RoadcasePod. We also have a YouTube channel where you can listen to the episodes there. It's Roadcase Podcast is the channel. And another great way to get involved is to simply email me if you have questions, comments, or even suggestions for guests. My email is info at roadcasepod.com. A great way to support Roadcase is also to rate and review this podcast. Uh, right now, you're likely listening to this podcast on your favorite listening platform. If you could just pause it and rate and review this podcast, that would go a long way. Thanks so much for that. And thanks to all of you for your continued support of Roadcase. I'm really psyched this week to have Alan Sparhawk with me of the band Low. Low put out their first album in 1994, uh, and their latest album, Dub- Double Negative, was released in 2018. And Alan's also headed up to other bands, Retribution, Gospel Choir, and Black Eyed Snakes. Low is really known for their slower, kind of deep feeling and very evocative sounds. Alan, I must say, is a very, very thoughtful, um, philosophical, and uh, deliberate individual, and I, I really enjoyed listening to his point of view. He's also a very experienced touring musician and has a great interest in how bands get on the road, uh, the ins and outs, and the day-to-day of being on the road and bringing shows to various venues. Most recently, Alan has put together a web series called Van Splaining, which you can see on YouTube. And it's really interesting look into different bands on the road, uh, loading into a venue, hanging out for the show, setting up, uh, sound checking, loadout, uh, what kind of the routine is in the uh, backstage. And even if you're a, if you're a seasoned uh, touring professional or you're a fan like me, um, It's a really interesting look into what bands uh, need to do to get themselves on the road and how different bands approach that process. And Van Splaining includes bands such as Michaela Davis and uh, Chelsea Wolfe, among others. Uh, They've done about five episodes so far, and hopefully they'll get back to that uh, when they can, when shows return, and we talk about that. We also talk about religion with Alan. He grew up in Utah and is of the... Mormon faith. So we talk about his, uh, how that upbringing and how religion and faith in his life uh, continues to play a part in how he looks at the world and how he produces music, um, both from a love and positive energy standpoint and inclusivity standpoint. Um, Alan's struggled with some uh, mental health issues in the past and depression. And uh, I was really, I'm really happy to note that he is very on top of uh, his own mental health. And we talk about therapy and uh, uh, ketamine therapy that he's been undergoing recently. So that's also um, a really intriguing insight into what's going on with, uh, with Alan and his, his mental state of mind these days through COVID and this tough time where it's really hard to stay focused. So we cover a lot of really cool topics with Alan. He's such a 
thoughtful and insightful individual and very philosophical and I really enjoyed this uh, the sit down I had with him or this uh, the zoom call uh, interview as it were with him and I know that you will too so stay tuned for Alan Sparhawk of the band low here on road case thanks again to all of you for joining me for this episode thanks again to Alan Sparhawk for being here and here we go Uh, hey, Alan. Welcome to Roadcase, man. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. How are you up there in Duluth? How are, how are you faring in this, uh, uh, I guess, the Arctic? Uh, the polar vortex has stopped. Polar so vortex. now we're kind of all thawing out a little bit, <laughs> both metaphorically yeah. and actually. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I was, yeah, January. January, first, first bit of January is usually when it when it hits, but it was, it was later in January this year, but yeah, we, yeah. we got our stretch, you know, I was, I was out walking the dog at 20 below in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, oh man, 20 uh, below. yeah, 20, 20 below for me. That's, that's sort of like the, that's, that's the watermark. That's, that's where you, you can't really blat. You can't brag about how cold it is unless it's 20 below. And if it's 20 below, <laughs> you suit up and you go out there and walk around so you can tell people that you walk around in it. Yeah, one time a couple of years ago, it got to that level down here. I can't imagine what it was up there because I'm in Chicago, and uh, wow, oh, that it just permeates everything. Ago, it crazy, yeah. it's uh, yeah. I went outside for a little bit. You get you gain a strong respect for the ultra cold and even like what it's like in outer space. Almost, I kept feeling like it was yeah. like that. I just pretended like I was walking on the the surface of the moon or something yeah. like that. Well, um, it's, it's it's threatening. It's it's, it's almost tra traumatizing the cold. It, you know, oh, I know. It's always I out know. there. It's why it wants to get you. It wants to get you. It's going to get yeah. I know you're yeah. relaxed now, but that thing's right outside. Right. Um, so I've been fascinated with the van splaining series, which is um, awesome. what you've, you've put on YouTube. And we were just talking about that a little bit and how much, how cool I think that is and how it caught my attention is uh, um, for this podcast at the road case. And mm -hmm. um um, it's a YouTube series where you, and I'd like to, uh, one of my initial questions is, did you just show up? But, um, <laughs> you kind of like, <laughs> it, 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 it feels like from a viewer or for, for the big picture is that you, you end up, you're there when they're loading in with a band, a smaller band in a small venue, and you kind of follow them through what the process is, yep. um, from load in to sound check to the show to load out to after the show etc and it's it's just fascinating and I, I i really love it and you're sort of there with your very mellow and introspective perspective and you're just hanging out and the people love you like so and there's five i think there's there's five episodes i hope there's more well um, we we did, we did five because that was all we could shoot before <laughs> covid kind of kicked yeah. in and took touring out but yeah, we we did those and and we had plans to do some more a few months later and and you know see if kind of wander around see if we find anybody to, to take the show. You know, there's, there's a lot of cat cable channels now and a lot of possibilities for that. So we were we were kind of trying it out, see if it could be something legitimate and and yeah, it was really fun. We it's just yeah, just the idea of kind of getting kind of meeting a band and watching them through the day, you know, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we obviously see the shows, we listen to the music. Sometimes you'll, an artist will put out a documentary like, Oh, you know, here we are on the road and that kind of thing. And, and it has a certain angle and there's certain aspects that it, it was sort of, I think people, you know, a director mm -hmm. will be like, Oh, well, they want to see this. Right. And like, well, there's also other things, you know, I mean, a lot of, to me, the most interesting things happen, like the, the loading, loading in and out of, of the stuff of, of the gear. Um, that time between sound check and the show when there's nothing to do and you, you know, it's sort of everybody fragments into their little private space where they contact someone from home or maybe they, you know, maybe, maybe some habits start kicking in and <laughs> start changing a little bit by the time the right. show comes and, and, you know, just kind of showing the, I don't know, I, I, I've always thought it was interesting. You know, once you get to know a band and you hear them, and you love them, you're like, wow, I wonder what kind of, how the they are around you know i know they go back i know they go backstage after the show but what does it feel like to come off the stage you know 
And then also yeah. the idea of the idea of kind of finding bands that maybe majority of the you know viewers maybe wouldn't have heard before. And yeah, there's that you know. angle too, which is really great. Yeah, because you you do pick some really interesting small bands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we of course of course would love to do do some bigger bands and stuff. And if if we do it more, we'll probably shoot for that. But yeah, no, I, yeah. It was just yeah, it was real simple with the a couple couple particulars came to mind, and then we just. Uh -huh. Try to find who else was touring around that time and kind of catch them the next day. So we were kind of able to gather some stuff that we were familiar with, some that we were was super new to me. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's 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 cool. I, I think there's a I, to me, it kind of stems out of you know the touring. Uh, you ha there's this really unique relationship you have with these places and the people that are there. Cause you know, you go, I mean, if you've been around a few times and you, you know, you come around once a year, you go, Oh, oh we're playing this place again. Okay, cool. I remember this, you know, people, people come and uh, um, a band ends up, there, there's this relationship you have, you come in, there's the house person, there's this, you know, the sound person. Uh, maybe you have uh -huh. a friend, there from the last show who was a big fan and they wrote and said hey you know and you're like hey yeah, come on come on meet us up at soundcheck at six o'clock or whatever so you, right you get um and what what happens is you you build these relationships with people all over the world based on this one day you know yeah and a lot of it and it's a it's a it's a really it's a really strong relationship and a lot of it is just based on like coming together like okay we don't know i don't know you you don't know me but we got this thing we're going to do tonight. We're all going to work together and get it done. And we're all going to go home satisfied that it's, that it's there. And you, you, you end up building really strong relationships with those people, like way more than you would a stranger just hanging out for a day. Cause you're, you're kind of thrown into the situation where you work together and, and I don't know, I, I was hoping well, when you say, when you say relationships with those people, do you mean the band's relationship with the fans or do you mean your well, relationship the, during the show with ever? Well, with the, the band's relationship with the crew and the promoter and the people who run the, run the place. Um, I, and then, and then the, the friend, you know, the, the one, the person that lets you stay on their floor the first time you played in, in Madison, you know, yeah. that person's that person come to every show. Okay. Well, well they they're gonna come early. And we're gonna hang out and then talk to them, and because because that one day we we spent with them last time was really awesome, and now they're like now we're our best friends, you know. Right. And right. So I, I kind of wanted to kind of show that there's this there's this little microcosm of 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 a, of a life that happens each night when this band comes in and, and kind of works with these with this has this relationship with these people. Yeah. And then you move on and. I don't know that that relationship with people it's it's really powerful and, and sort of um it was, it was an unexpected surprise I, I remember when i first started touring yeah what struck me was the um getting the personal side of the performers and what their kind of build up is on the daily on on a um prior to the show um things that they're doing routines that they have how they prepare themselves and also a kind of look at what touring is and what that means to them and how it can seem kind of like an sort of, this is their job. It's an ordinary effort to get to the show. You know, you're just mm -hmm. putting your stuff in the back of your Subaru Outback sometimes or a rented mm -hmm. car. Yeah. In the case, I think that was a Lord Friday the 13th. Yeah, that yeah. They, like, they were, they got her wrecked and they were like in a rental car yeah. and they're, they're putting their stuff in the back of their car, all of their, it's those, those little, those little things that yeah. were, that made it really interesting. Um, was that part of your, your process as well? Well, yeah. I mean, I think we were, we we're, were hoping those kinds of things would come across and there's, you know, there's a trust. You just kind of trust that if you show up, turn the camera on, you're going to catch those moments. And, and, it, and it definitely happened, you know, without having to look for it or, you know, anything like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. As you say, it was, it's, it's, it's interesting to see that it's interesting. I think even more when it's not staged and it's not like, okay, everybody, we're doing our documentary now. You know, yeah. Did you, did you, casual, um, did you, like, where'd you get this? Amplifier? Yeah. Wow. This thing's heavy. 
<laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 of course. It's kind of almost stream of consciousness that way. But did you um did you talk to these acts before uh, you showed up or did you just kind of no? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. There was definitely like, hey. Uh, yeah. Our, our manager, the, the producer I worked with, Holly, um, contacted the bands and, and asked if we could show up, you know, and everybody's a little nervous about someone poking around in their business with a camera. But um yeah, people were pretty, pretty open to it, and and uh, yeah, yeah, we just called, we just let them like, hey, can we show up at the show you're doing in Nashville, and and uh, kind of film your film your your day, and maybe, you know, we we're we approach it like we're not really going to be filming your show, and we're not going to be interviewing you necessarily. You know, we maybe bump into each other in a corner and maybe have a couple of questions. Or I might come up and ask, you know, like like wow, how do you tell me about your pedal board or you know that kind of thing you know i mean that could be yeah but not not like really yeah no, i don't know i don't get other stuff than interview and performance you know right so you started to do that obviously before covid i mean no one's mass and there's obviously not not right. there hasn't been any shows so right. it is kind of fun and refreshing to see something that's uh that's new out there that documents the live music uh experience as it were yeah. um so what sort of prompted you at this time to uh, to publish it and put it up on YouTube? Well, obviously COVID <laughs> kind of shut yeah. us down and yeah, for and sure. We, but we had, you know, we had it all done and uh, uh, Carlos who edited it was, it was really coming together fast and it really, it really felt good. And, and we just thought, well, let's just, let's just fold this out here. I mean, there originally, originally the idea is maybe, you know, shoot a few of these and, pitch it around to a few people who might be interested in, you know, helping it out, whether it's an internet channel or a TV channel or something like that. But I think we just thought like, well, this thing's, thing we did here is really beautiful. And I know people are hurting and about, you know, shows being gone. So we thought, well, let's just, let's just put this up here and have it be a celebration of, of what we had and, and let's see what, see what will happen next, you know? Yeah. So, what what kind of insights did you did you gain into the the world of touring by creating this series? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to sound too like. Well, I'm, I've been doing this a long time, so. <laughs> well, I but mean, you have was, been doing this a long yeah, time. <laughs> I, mean, I have been doing it a long time, and there wasn't necessarily as many surprises. I mean, to me, it was fun to see like some of the bands that we that are on fans playing. Of course, very young, and this is their new first first time, kind of getting out there and trying it out. And, you know, being being the old, being the old sage of touring, you're kind of. It's, I don't know. It's, it's fun to actually watch people kind of go through those first realizations, and you know, have them struggle with stage fright, and and have you know, have them have them be afraid, and and see them purely innocently go out there, and then succeed. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing, especially with you know a younger, newer artist, because that's just, that's just everything. You know, I mean, you get older and you realize, like, yeah, you know, sometimes it goes bad, and sometimes they're great shows, and sometimes, most of the time, you don't have that much control over it and stuff. So, so you get, you know, you get used to it, you get used to the randomness of it. But watching someone who's young, who's young and has dreams, and and is, is trying to navigate their way through the complicated processes is is, is life affirming and interesting and and it always, it always creates good results. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So it was, it was about the kind of the personal stories and documenting the personal struggles or, and successes and showing those yeah. from, from the inside and what people, what like fans wouldn't ordinarily see or yeah. of the artists and their process Yeah, and what they go, what they go through. Yeah. Kind of like, well, Actually, now, now that I re I'm thinking about it, I realized that the idea really came out of something that, that happened on Twitter. Uh, there was one huh. point where someone had, I think, oh, we were on tour. And I think we had just packed the van. It was late in tour. And we really had a, we had really had our game down. We really had, we really knew how to pack, you know, everybody, every, we found the right place for everything. And I remember I took a picture yeah. and I put it up on Twitter and said, <laughs> for all those who, anybody who knows what this means, this one's for you, basically. Yeah. Like anybody who recognizes loading in an event would recognize, like, hey, that's a nice pack. So, um, <laughs> so what happens? People started sending me photos of their, hey, I'm leaving on tour. They 
take a take a picture of their hatchback with all their gear in the back and send it to me right on twitter and then i would i would rate it you know i'd do a I'd do a tweet that oh, would sort of do a little you'll have to look back that's amazing but that's was, amazing you know, i did notice the detail when you were with i think it was lord friday the 13th and you 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 just made a couple mentions of how they were lying well, yeah. their guitar in yep. the back yep. and i was like oh this guy's on it man this guy oh, totally wants can, to yeah. pack it really well <laughs> oh, of course oh yeah and anybody who's anybody who's done a few tours and packed a van, it becomes an obsession and it becomes, Oh, it's a thing, man. Like, it's, a th it's like, how do you do your thing, man? Well, let's go watch you pack. Your, let's go watch you pack the van. So, it, so it became this thing and it was funny. And I'd be, you know, I'd rate, you know, you know, there's, there's been variations, you know, people have me rate their dogs. There's somebody who uh, rated oh, their, their beekeeping equipment man. or something like that. There's somebody that sent me that. And so, so out of that came the idea of like, Oh, wow. We could almost do a, you know, people people would tweet like, "Oh, this is hilarious! You, you should do a show about this, or you should do a little." And then I think like, "Oh, actually, I wonder, you know." And of course, it's like, "Well, what do you do? Do you do you go around and just kind of meet a band on the road and go, like, hey, let's check out your pack?'" You know, like, "Well, no, this this could this could be like a window into like who are these people and how's how their day is." So that's kind of how that how the idea came. And and I, just, I talked to our I talked to our manager, and she ended up she's she was she ended up helping me produce it and yeah it was just yeah i, I forgot that yeah it started out as twitter kind oh, of, that's uh, kind really of a running cool. joke about packing vans and, and and you know you know you joke around like oh i don't know maybe i'm gonna put those symbols down a little lower or you know that's pretty, <laughs> pretty haphazard uh guitar placement there you know that kind of thing so, joking yeah no that's hilarious man sometimes like social media can be fun and cool and start something off that has some yeah. decent meaning you know <laughs> um <laughs> did it did i hope you come out with new episodes because i i, I think it's i think it's really cool um, yeah we hope to i got it obviously when when did these actually back. take what part of the year did these actually take place uh it would have been November into December, November, December of 2019. 19. Yeah. So okay, yeah, we got, we right, did them. Right. We started scheduling. We we're going to do some more in April, May, but yeah. then quarantine came yeah, and we're like, Oh, course. okay. Cancel that. Well, what are we going to do with these? <laughs> what right. do we do with these six episodes we already have? Yeah. No, I hope you do some more. And I, and even like, bigger bands and like more different size venues yeah. has it given you has it has it given you a different perspective on what this all takes or was it sort of like <laughs> ah, I've, I've been there seen this or um what's kind of your mindset is it something where you looked at it and said ah you know I, i've seen this all the time and no not really anything that was anything that was familiar to me it was exciting to like i said to watch somebody else going through that sometimes for the first time um mm -hmm. there there was some cool thing. I thought it was, it, it had been a while since I've been so close to a large crew. Like when we did the, the Chelsea, Chelsea Wolf episode, uh -huh. I mean, she, she's, she's a, she's a bigger artist and she has, you know, she's a really heavy stage kind of set up and all this stuff. So her crew and her whole thing was, was big. I mean, she had like six or eight people on staff and, and oh, like this okay, whole yeah. trailer and stuff. So to me, that was interesting because, I mean, you know, years and years of like, no, we're just in a van, I guess. And us three people are going to do it. You know, we're going to take care of everything and, and stuff. So it was it was interesting to go and see like, oh, yeah, this is kind of the next step is like, OK, we're playing thousand seaters and two thousand seaters and stuff. And you want to put on a show. OK, well, got these people and, and you get to meet them. You know, you meet, meet the crew. And, and of course, the bigger crew is is just as cool and fun and you can you can see that they've been working together for a long time and the way their humor is and their language is and, and it was yeah. just really cool to see like a larger crew with still that same spirit of like wow here we are it's hard work sometimes it sucks but isn't it great we're doing doing this and not like working at the working at the pork and beans plant or whatever you know yeah so there's always some commonalities that occur oh, yeah, kind of yeah staff yeah. you know pe right people are chill you know there's a there's a you know certain kinds of personalities just don't last on the road you know so so right, just, right. so when you get a crew it's it's good with an artist who who cares enough to make sure their crew is 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 cool yeah it, it's 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 pretty pretty affirming you know you're not gonna you're not gonna find as 
find many businesses, you know, basically small businesses like that that have that have um, that kind of interaction and that kind of that kind of camaraderie. So, yeah, diving back into that and looking at how touring was in this kind of very um, open and honest and raw look at what it really is. Did that make you miss touring and want to get back on the road? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's, I think it's natural, you know, covering and watching someone else's show, you know, it's, of course. I don't know. Well, not even at the time, but like at, when you were putting these, putting, the oh, putting them together, together yeah. yeah, because you were putting them together, presumably during COVID, during COVID I, I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. what impact did that have on you? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, putting it together, I think I think at the time, you know, I think we we're more concerned, like, oh no, <laughs> when do we when do we get to do some more? You know, like, okay, well, um, yeah, I think we there was some discussion of like, oh, maybe we should wait until, you know, until touring starts again, and then people will be kind of thinking about that and stuff. But I, I'm glad we decided to just put it out because <laughs> we would have been waiting yeah. a long time. But um, yeah, so am I. I don't know. I mean, I. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's things I miss. I mean, there's things you know. I can definitely look at those. You know, I remember looking at those episodes, and there's there's definitely um, different parts of each of those artists that I recognize in in my own ex in my own experience. You know, and yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I miss touring, and I I know, you know it's been sort of the lifeblood of, of the band for for a long time. So of course I'm, I'm anxious for it to happen again, but it's also, it's also been almost a year now. So I've had to really learn. Yeah, how to, I know it's to really, almost you know, like, it's probably it's just almost like the new normal is just like not being out there, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think we were chomping at a bit more to play like for the first three or four months of the quarantine than, than it has been now. I mean, now it's, it's like, well, cool. We get like, get right. Back stressing me out worrying about when it's going to happen so i'm just gonna yeah i think i heard something where mimi was saying um your wife was talking about how oh we're used to coming back home after being on the road but that was kind of early in the quarantine mm -hmm. i think the thing that people aren't used to is like not going back on the going road back. yeah <laughs> not having something else to look for you know if i for me that's a that's a big thing like not having something at least like okay oh i got this thing coming up in a month I know, right. what I, what has, I know what I got to yeah. work on, you know. What has kept you busy from a creative standpoint during this period? Well, we've been doing this weekly kind of set. We do four or five songs uh, weekly on Friday afternoons mm -hmm. on in Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we, I guess we kind of started that a month, maybe a month. I guess we started at the top of April mm -hmm. in 2020. And then, and, uh, yeah, at first, at first, I was a little reluctant. I thought, yeah, I don't know, give people a break. There's going to be a lot of people scrambling on the internet to try to get people to stay in touch and stuff. But I don't know. After a while, you know, you get messages from people like, "Oh, I really miss seeing you guys," and "Oh, this 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 song has been getting me through this hard time." And so we thought, okay, well, maybe maybe there's something to this. Maybe we can, you know, try to give figure out a way to kind of give. And it, it's it's ended up being uh, a lifesaver, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, quarantine went longer than three months. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you guys continued to pattern for us? Have you continued to Couldn't produce these, put these together oh, on yeah. Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. That's been doing, a constant. Yeah, we didn't do it uh -huh. every, every Friday. We do, do a thing. And, and that's, that's been good because, you know, it's, it's a goal. Like I, like I said, it's at least for me, I know I function better if I know I got some coming up. Yeah, and know like okay, well, I need to make sure I focus on this and this and this you know, until that comes up. So it's been good to have that. I think you know, otherwise, you know, it would have been very easy for three or four weeks to go by without without feeling like you're doing anything. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and and then you know, no matter how much you rationalize with that, your, your subconscious really really has a hard time with it, and and uh, eventually it'll, it'll wear you down and. And stuff so in terms of just not having like a regular sort of yeah situation. not having not being able uh, yeah. to really engage who you are and what you what you do not not being put on the spot 
to be like, yeah. okay, you, you need to be, you need to be ready for this. You need to be ready for this. Oh, okay. I can do that. And I don't know. Yeah. At least, like I said, at least for me, that's a good, that's a good motivator. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, one thing I'm really curious about is, you know, your music has been, um, is, is kind of on the quieter side. And I'm kind of always wondering what your perspective was in a live setting. Um, and, you know, early on, I understood that there was, um, that there you, you had struggled with some acceptance issues with a majority of your audience, but you're out there getting um, also validation from those that really loved it. And I'm, I'm curious as to what your perspective is on um, that over the, over the years and how that's affected your performance in a live setting. Well, well, there are a lot of factors kind of going on when we first started, it was, it was 93, 94. Uh, the general populace was just fresh to learning and understanding that there's, there's an underground and, you know, sort of all this stuff that was originally Indian underground was sort of kind of forward. Um, so they, so it's actually an exciting time. A lot of people, people were going to shows, you know, it became yeah. the young people were like, Hey, let's go to, let's go to a show. Let's go to the all ages join and see who's playing. You know, it was this sort of pre-internet. So you didn't, you didn't have a chance to go check and see whether you like the band or not, whether you, before you went to go, go, go give them a chance, you know? So there was a little bit of this circuit, this little scene of people, people just kind of going out. If, if you play at this club, you're, there's going to be a couple people there and, and maybe they'd like it, you know? <clears throat> and when we started, we knew we were doing, you know, from the, from our first show, it was really obvious that we were doing something that really divided the audience. <laughs> you know, really? Some people that really <laughs> responded well. And there were some people who were, got really uncomfortable and would and, and would either go away or start start badgering us so but we but we we were kind of determined like this is this is our thing so, so yeah we went out touring touring at first it was it was pretty intense and um but there was but there were people out there that were hungry to see something different and if you could if you could find those couple people in each town they would bring they bring a few friends next time, you know, that's, that's kind of how we, how we built. Um, and we, you know, I suppose like a lot of bands that you interview, it was, it was, it's, it was pretty DIY, you know, we're yeah. you know, cramming in the car and hoping that somebody would invite us to s sleep on their floor and, and, uh, you do your own stuff. You're at the mercy of the, the house <laughs> sound tech and, and, uh, you do your right, best and right. you, know, you get a box of some records and CDs and, and um, so I don't know. We, and, and we knew going out that we were basically going to be testing audiences. A lot of our first shows were like, well, okay, it's new band night and we'll put, a lot of, let's throw together a bill of three bands that they're wanting to do a show or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, so we're still, it was smaller audiences, but we were getting in front of people who were not, who did not know what they were about to hear. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so that would elicit a certain reaction. Because uh, yeah, I mean we were, I mean Codeine had been around and Galaxy Five Hundred had been around, uh, but like when we started, like nobody was nobody was playing. You know, I mean Hey Ho was still twenty some years to in the making. You know, I mean people playing mellow stuff was pretty, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, we made, is that we made, where, people, uncom it, we made people really uncomfortable yeah. sometimes because like, <laughs> they couldn't. It's like, well, yeah, it's, the, it doesn't sound like the Carpenters, but it's <laughs> still pretty quiet and mellow. What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, there's a female drummer. Like, yeah. why doesn't it sound like the Carpenters? Yeah, why? Um, why yeah, that that <clears throat> must have taken. Did that take a lot of um, internal strength to to power through when you're getting negativity? Um, maybe, I, I don't know. I, I, I think, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've always, I've always really sort of had a deep respect for, you know, artists, artists that are the challenge you, artists that are going to put you maybe in an uncomfortable place and force you to answer this question inside yourself that yeah. maybe, maybe you've been neglecting answering, you know? Um, mm. yeah, I like, no, I've I've always 
I don't know. I mean, no, we, we, we went into it knowing that like, you know, this is, this is going to really make some people uncomfortable the way, you know, we're so slow, slow and quiet. And, and I think, and we, we were into that. I mean, we were, we were, we were down with that. I mean, to me, I mean, the discussions within the band are like, let's go out there and do something. It's going to really make, you know, make people uncomfortable is, you know, you know, and of course, you know, we were, we were in our twenties. A lot of the scene that was happening at the time was, was the young people and, Oh, Hey, we like punk rock too. It's like, Oh, you like punk rock, huh? Okay. Well, can you hang through this? You know? Right. Um, you know, can you it, sit it, still? For... Can you sit, or, yeah. Can you sit <laughs> still? Can you, can you, can you sit here and, and last through 30 seconds, through 30 minutes of something that you did not expect, you know, or, I don't know. For me, that's that's sort of where, you know, the the, the punk aesthetic is is more to do with, you know, I and mean, it's 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 about, you know, about it's 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 I don't know. It has sometimes it's sometimes you got to be contrary and you got to be pushing someone's buttons, you know, to to really make something happen. And I don't know, but yeah. Plus, we we had a lot of faith in it. I mean, we we. We wrote, Clearly. we wrote those few first few songs. We we really we really liked it, and we really were like, no, I think if, I think if people give this a chance. I think there's a few people out there that really this would really resonate with. I mean, it really yeah. resonates with me. It really resonated with John. It resonated with Mimi. And we we're like, well, this must be something, you know. I mean, yeah. get ready, get ready for a fight. But I really believe this. I really believe in this, and I and you know and, and uh, I don't know. To me, the best it, to me like. The history of art and music is it's you know the people we look up to are the people who who did something different you know really different and probably for quite a while was were looked at sideways because they were doing something something that was maybe challenging the norm and, and or at least challenging their the audience's patience a little bit you know yeah i mean i think of like visual artists number one when you when you first mentioned that but then i'm like well a a performance artist like yourself who has, who gets out there and challenges the norm is even more courageous because you're confronting those that can actually vocally get up in your mug about not liking something. If they're assholes. Yeah. It's about. pretty, it's pretty immediate, you know? Yeah. But I don't know, we're, we're young and we're young and yeah, kind of yeah. determined and from a, from an underdog town awesome, in the dude. woods. And we were like, yeah, you, you guys don't like us. I don't care. We're going to do this anyway. You know, yeah. there's a little bit of there's a little bit of that there's a little bit of like you know no they're not gonna like us but we're we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway <laughs> yeah but about and, and and about your live performances i understand you've, you've played in some untraditional venues and churches and places like that has that how's that figured into your aesthetic and your um appreciation of the your own music and how it kind of goes out there in the world in a particular environment well, uh, I remember earlier on when, once we started to get maybe a few people coming to the shows, I, I remember our booking agent, um, the guy we still work with, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tom Windish. Um, he was like, wow, we, we need to try to get you. Maybe we should, he, he could recognize, he recognized sort of what we were doing and that and it's, it's sort of different. And, you know, he could see the struggles we'd have sometimes in bars with stuff and he'd be like, Oh, I want to get, so I think he, he got on this tip, like, let's, let's book you guys in somewhere else. So he, so he started talking to promoters, like, is there like a church space they could rent to do the show instead? Or do you have yeah. some alternate space? So, so he pushed that for a while. Same with like Europe, like our, our booking agent early on there recognized it like, Oh, I don't know, we could, we could book, book these guys in a church. And in Europe, that's much more a common thing. Like this, this, the, the church, the old church in the center of the town ends up being like the cultural center as well. You know, yeah, for sure. stuff right. they're, they're set up for amazing shows and stuff like that. So, so we started doing those and, and that's, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't say necessarily like, Oh, these are the only kinds of shows we play. I mean, I, I do, I enjoy playing the, the crappy low ceiling punk club as much as I like <laughs> playing, you know, the whatever cathedral in Chicago or, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it's it's been it's been nice and i think i think for fans to be able to go to a unique space and sort of see it that way i think is memorable and worth worth trying to do yeah for sure and it gave us the freedom to 
put on shows that you know make music and put on shows that you could pull off in a church and did it kind of did it did it sort of figure into this non-traditional venue as sort of a non-traditional aesthetic that you you felt you had sure yeah yeah i mean i think that it makes the uh yeah i think yeah for, forcing a new forcing in forcing ourselves into new spaces yeah it was very much <laughs> the aesthetic of <laughs> imposing ourselves upon the world <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna force you to deal with us, but at least we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put some thinking into how we. Well, maybe there was things. less. Maybe there was less vocal opposition in a, in a church environment to. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> people yeah, are a little more respectful, probably. Yeah, I would I would assume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a subconscious sort of like you walk in the church, like oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be quiet. Yeah, yeah. Same as like I took a my nap. My 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 son, who's now fifteen, I we um, uh, we took him to Italy when he was really little, and he was pretty boisterous individual. But when he got into a church and felt that energy, that quiet, yeah. kind of awe inspiring energy, yeah. he would be quiet, and yeah. it was it was remarkable. <laughs> Just it's sort of like everyone understands it's kind of like the spiritual. Yeah. Uh, there's like, there's like a button that you that you press, and you just you're yeah. sort of quiet right yeah it's it's true i think it has to do with yeah especially over in italy those some probably the churches walking into are several hundred years old oh yeah and this is what i'm remember i'm this was in rome too so oh, wow. think, <laughs> yeah. think think of all the completely deep intention <laughs> that was in that yeah. that's this passed through that church over the of those hundreds and hundreds of years I, oh, I, mean, yeah. I really think there's something to that i think I think that's that's what we sense when we walk in there. Is we, we it's not conscious, it's subconscious. It's something that's resonating. It's like, no, this is a very holy place. You know, and holy. And you can redefine what holy means, but holy as mm -hmm. in there's some really this. <laughs> this is a space of heavy intention. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think that's what does it. So, speaking of religion, um, you grew up in 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 Utah, as and you are Mormon. Utah, then that, Minnesota. Minnesota, and then Minnesota, 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 right? Yeah. Does spirituality <clears throat> or religion figure into the way you sort of look at the world, and does that affect the way you produce music? Yeah, certainly. I mean, religion. You know, religion. Even even if you're, even if it's a lifelong struggle, it's it's it's, it's giving you the language and a perspective of of who we are, why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know. What were we doing before we came here? What are we going to be doing after this? You know, it, it all has, you know, those are the big questions. And of course they have a bearing on what you create. You know, sometimes it can be real literal and songs will come out with, that use, you know, I'll be writing and sometimes language will come out that's, that I recognize as from maybe the religious canon, you know, some of the concepts, but but yeah, the overall idea that we're brothers and sisters, and that that there's there's a pot there's positive energy that you can create in the world, and there's negative energy that you can create, and uh, when we're done with this world, as hard as this struggle is, and as hard as you know, and as many times as we we cursed the very earth that we stand on, or even cursed God, you know, there's I, you know, when when we're when we're done, there, we will return to a place of complete acceptance and and forgiveness, and and we will probably f feel the very same things uh, towards the rest of of, of everybody. And I, I don't know. We're I, I mean, there's multiple aspects to the, the religion that yeah. you could say are like well parallel to what's going on but that's that's just more detailed to I me mean, to me the most powerful thing is that that we're eternal beings and that we're brothers and you know that we're of the same family and right. and your suffering is my suffering and and uh and we're we're going to be one in a way that we can't even comprehend right now you know yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, that it's, you come at it from a, a level of compassion. Try to, yeah. Compassion a little bit. Well, I think, I think there's a freedom to look at reality 
I, I think I think there's there's a little bit more. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're, it might be a little bit easier to face and talk about sort of hardship if, if you know that it's, if you, if you know it's temporary, it doesn't mean it's nothing. It just means it's, yeah, the attitude is more like, let's, let's get through this together instead of, mm-hmm. holy fuck, I know this is horrible. I, I don't know what to do. It's kind of looking at a, like a bigger picture and instead of kind of a what was me attitude, which yeah, I mean, kind of clearly helped you through this period. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's perfect. You know, I mean, your, your body and your mind is going to create. Yeah, for sure. Gonna create the, the, the illness that it's going to do, but, um, but certainly the idea that, that uh, this is just a step in, in the eternal growth, you know, it, it, it affects the way you look at yourself and what you create, how you interact with other people. It affects the way you see other people, you know, even if, you know, even if they're frustrating or even if you're angry about something they do, it's, there's sort of a saving grace in knowing that, well, that's, a, that's, you know, they'll, they'll need forgiveness as well. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to withhold that you know yeah yeah it's non-judgmental try to be anyway (laughs) (laughs) these are all maxims well you're you're walking the walk man um has a lot of those sort of touch points helped you getting through this covid period oh sure yeah yes yeah i mean i think you know, whether it's just, oh, hey, you know, time is time. is time. It's just a blink of an eye in the long run. You know, it's just, it's just a small amount of time. We can do this. You know, the idea of every human being, brother or sister, you know, that's that sort of plays into how you look at them, whether you're angry at them for not wearing a mask or whether you're missing them because you can't see them. You know, this this yeah. this family connection, this, it's, it's, that hangs on that. And so... Well, it's, yeah, it's been such a difficult time for everybody. Um, I know, like, it, it's it's not a secret that you canceled the tour years and years ago because of, you know, some struggles with oh, yeah. uh, depression. Yep. Um, where are you at these days, and um, how has that changed for you, and changed the way that you're that you've um, that you're looking at your own career and your own self? Well, I guess the, I mean, the peak of, the peak of it was about 15 or 16 years ago. So yeah. ever since then, I've been, it's been sort of a careful, 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 careful little recovery, you know, yes, one yes. phase at a time. And you, you sort of, you know, you're never, you're never too far away from disaster, <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. but you learn to see it coming a little better. You, you know, I, I remember the beginning of the quarantine, you know, we'd been doing our thing, touring, blah, blah, blah. There was, there was a little bit of the first month I noticed, wow, I'm I'm a lot more stressed out than I have been in a while. So yeah. Uh, I ended up, yeah, I ended up getting getting therapy, uh, kind of calling this, this woman that I've been thinking about getting. And that's that really helped. Um, um, we were able to continue working on a record, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that kind of – that's nice because then it's it's something you say okay well i'm working on something and it'll be something to show at the end of this <laughs> instead of nothing you know right um, uh i went i started taking ketam- ketamine therapy uh-huh huh and that's yeah i don't know if you're okay. familiar with that <laughs> tell me about that that's for uh yeah you're not familiar with ket- ketamine therapy i not with therapy i'm familiar with that as a as a drug yeah um yeah yeah, they've been uh, and not 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 from a personal standpoint, but I've heard I've heard yeah, about yeah, it. I didn't know yeah, there was a, some kind of therapy where you microdose it or or kind of kind of. I mean, you're you're getting a dose. I mean, you're definitely yeah, okay. But it's but it's a it's a controlled environment. Uh, you're mm-hmm. what it's doing is addressing it's addressing past trauma. There's there's it, it is it's it's kind of like ayahuasca. I haven't taken ayahuasca, but. Uh, 
the, the approach of bringing psychedelics into uh, into psychotherapy or you know therapy or mental mental health. Yeah, and they've been they've been kind of dabbling around with that for a while. They've been you know obviously L- LSD was originally studied for as, as something to use for uh, therapy for people and different things like that. But in you know in right. ayahuas- ayahuasca is the last few years has kind of been something people are talking about. It's, it's a psychedelic, but you're sort of going on a journey and. And sort of the process of your soul kind of going through this thing uh, ends up kind of setting you a little bit more straight. And then also chemically, uh, ketamine goes in and your your neurons, you know, say your neuron is this thing kind of looks like your hand, except and each of your fingers is a nerve, you know, the, the, uh, is, it, is that the neuron? No, what, and it's, it's reaching out and those are the things that connect with other set, other yeah. neurons. Mm-hmm. Over time and with stress, and whatever those those arms kind of get kind of get pulled back and sometimes they can you'll lose that connection with the other neurons and what what ketamine does is actually wakes those up and opens them up and gives them a chance to reconnect and, interesting uh, and but like i said there's also this aspect of the experience when you go for the injection it's an injection and you know you're in a room comfortable and and it's about an hour hour and a half that takes to go to process through it. And it's definitely, it's definitely like you're, you're, you're leaving the, your mind's kind of leaving the room. Wow. And, and in some way in, in doing so it's, it's sort of in your mind, like peeling away all these things and you're sort of able to sort of separate them out and go like, Oh yeah, here's this thing. Oh wait, that's actually not part of me. I don't need that anymore. You sort that of you're a, actually able to say that consciously to yourself at that time and hold on kinda, to that kind of knowledge of, yeah. thought. Kind of, yeah. I mean, there's multiple ways. There's sometimes you'll take, some, sometimes you'll do it, and it'll just you know it'll feel like there's some moment where you you were underwater and you just came out to the surface. Huh? Just come out to the surface and the sun's shining, and you're like, <gasps> yeah. Take that first breath, and 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 that's what it does to you. You know. Sometimes, you know, there's people who, who meet God, you know, and they're probably not meeting God, but in their mind, they've been put to this place. And, and once they've gone to this place and made this decision or seen this perspective, they can go, you right. can go back to reality. And now that's, now that's shifted. And it was hard. You know, it's, it's a pretty, it, it's, it's had a lot of success with people with PTSD. Uh, I went in because, I mean, I have PTSD, but like, I was just, I was just, I was borderline catatonic depression it was just it was starting to get to be like okay i'm not i don't even care to get out of bed anymore here pretty soon i i, I remember this right. i better go in to get something going yeah but, good for uh, you to seek good for you to seek help man yeah um, but uh, i would i would highly recommend it and they do this it's like it's, it's, they, inj- they they inject you or whatever and then it's a supervised situation are you talking yeah. to somebody at the time no and they're talking no, ta- no you're but they're room. you're kind of yeah in a room and, and you just they, they'll come just and check chill on you. and they like yep. yeah interesting they come and check wow. on you see if you're okay you know and you, you kind of debrief you, with the therapist afterwards or like another yeah. in a couple days or something yeah. or yeah the, ther- the therapist they see is aware of of it and we'll talk about it and stuff but anyway yeah i would again right. I, I know i'm harping on it a long time but i would highly recommend it. no man this is, it's it's super interesting i asked the question anyway so thank you uh, <laughs> but uh um, um, well other than that yeah i mean t- now, touring is hard on on mental health right was yeah <laughs> okay that, uh, that's what you're saying. yeah 15 years ago yeah when i when i had sort of basically nervous breakdown a full-on like hallucinating thinking i was someone else and stuff like that i, I mean that was it was crazy there man man wait wait till hey kids wait till you lose your mind <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Oh, um, anyway, so uh, yeah, coming coming out of that, it was more than depression at the time. That is what you're saying. It oh was, yeah. So well, if you get de- serious mental, if you get depressed enough, yeah. If you if you're depressed, but you're also kind of manic, it's gonna it's gonna keep you doing stuff. But your brain's shutting down. It's not it's not being able to read. So like all these wild that you know you, you know you. The scenario of like the person who, you know, you start writing and they're like frantically writing their notebook and, you know, and they're like, oh, they're stop, staying up all night and, you know, painting yeah, things yeah. on their walls and stuff like that. Like that's, that's what was going on. And that, that just, you know, that's, that comes from depression. And, and yeah, I mean, once, once you've 
you know, if you had if you've had a moment in your life where you mentally crashed, yeah, after after that, you're usually a little more a little more vigilant yeah. and can uh, avoid some of the pitfalls, you know, and catch yourself when it's starting to get weird. Um, you know, there's some there's definitely some practical things you can watch for if you know if you're not sleeping, not eating. Uh, you know, it's 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 starting to get critical. You know, um, but yeah, touring. I mean. Going on the road, there's it's it's a mixed thing. There's there's excitement. You're you're dreaming about how it could be. You're running into the reality of how it is. Uh, you're laying your heart out there in front of people, and sort of every day having to figure out what armor you got to put on to get through. You know, doing that, and you know sometimes you got to wear a lot of it. And and uh, but. And also, there's something about being displaced, you know, if day after day, if you're sleeping somewhere else, you know, no matter how glamorous that might be, if you're staying at a hotel or something like that, it, it, it's it kind of it's disorienting. And I think it's psychologically a drag because I think we I think people need a place, you need a place where, you know, that's yeah. my place. I'm away from that place now. But in two weeks, I'm going to be back to that place. So so that's fine. And if you don't have that and if you don't have. Um, you know, obviously most people have that, but I mean, I've, I've, I've been on tours with people who were like, well, I just kind of left, kind of put all my stuff in storage and I'm just going to be on the road for a while. And I mean, sure enough, after three months, <laughs> they're pulling their hair out because it's, it's, it's crazy. You have to have some place that's yours, you know, and touring, touring pushes that, yeah, touring pushes that a little bit. And if, you know, if you're more sensitive to that, then touring is going to be hard. If, if you're young and it's an adventure. It's a lot easier, you know, <laughs> when you're old and it's right. like, wow, I got to sleep on this. Really? Um, you know, it gets, it gets a little harder, but um, yeah, there's that. It's just, it's just a, mere, a mixed bag. You know, you're close, you're close, you're in close proximity to certain personalities that maybe in, when you're at home in normal <laughs> situations, you wouldn't necessarily be around them for more than six or eight hours at a time, you know? Um, right. So there's interaction stuff. <laughs> um uh, one thing I thought, I mean, for me, as far as like mental health, mental health and touring, you know, and I, I remember recognizing this right, you know, early on is that when you go on tour, there's, it's, it's, you have a task each day. Okay. What are we doing? Okay. We're driving to Denver. You know, we'll set up our stuff. We're going to play a show. We're going to pack it up and we're going to see where we, we stay. So you go and you do that. You drive, you do your setup, you do your show and then it's done. And you have this overwhelming feeling of like, wow, I accomplished what I set out to do today. And it, and it, it actually was a pretty good show and, and it was fun. And I got to hang out mm -hmm. with people that I, that I love, you know, and you get used to that. And then, and you go home and see, when you go from home to, to the disorienting situation, you already, you know, it's coming and you've been preparing for it for a while. You're like, Oh yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be wild. Well, I used to imagine yourself, imagine yourself down in Florida. I'll imagine myself in Texas, you know, you get, you're already in. So, so right. as you go on tour, the, the disharmony and, and the displacement that your subconscious is screaming about, you know, gets sort of settled down a little bit by, you know, it's like, oh, well, well, this is what we've been thinking about. And this is this thing we're going to do. And it, yeah, you know, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. And yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to eat at Wendy's, but it's, it's okay. I knew this is going to be tough and, and we'll do, we'll do a thing. Thing is, and, you, and you'll adjust. Thing is, and you get home. Mm -hmm. one part of your brain's going like oh man we are home i've been thinking about this for weeks this is going to be great i'm going to finally feel okay or i'm going to find you know this this part of me that's been craving that consistency is going to finally get that so then you come home and a day and a half into it you realize your subconscious is like hey uh where's the daily uh where's the daily affirmation here what did you accomplish today where's that feeling of getting something done you know and 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 the where where's that energy that you that you were getting every day from other people, you know? Right. So so half your brain's like, oh yeah, this is great. I'm home. I can relax. And the other person's like, no, you are. We don't know what's going on here. You got to figure out what we're doing here, you know. So yeah. so it, it can be I, to me the most dangerous. I mean, if you're someone who's prone to depression and you're a musician, the the, the hardest is coming home. You know, you you know people have problems adjusting to life on the road, but coming home. Hands down, everyone is going to feel a little bit of a drag of that 
because it's it's just. Do you find that as a commonality across other personalities oh, yeah, out there, yeah. or is that every yeah, time I joke? Every time I joke about yeah. it with with other musicians who are tour a lot, they're like, "Oh yeah, you're totally right, right man." Like ugh, last time I got home from tour, it took me a week to even feel like I was alive, you know. And it's and it's not it's not like it's not fatigue from touring. It's it's coming home and your brain sort of having to to adjust back to something that. Sh- part of you thinks should be easy to adjust back and so familiar, but the other part of your brain is like, no, no, we're all we see is that this is different. It's right. not what we're used to. Where are the things that where's the endorphins we're used to getting <laughs> every day. So it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's an easier process to talk yourself into being on the road every day. And this is a task that we need to yeah. do. And you're getting that gratification of a show. Um, you're making the argument that it should be coming home. It's more of a coming home depression kind of issue. Coming home is more depressing. You right. Know? You know, and that's not even, right. and, it's, and it, I don't think it has anything to the fact of like, oh, well, it was so fun on tour and I'm home. It's like, no, no, it's because your brain was thinking everything's going to be cool when you go to home, but it ain't. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So it's almost like going on vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then coming home and there's like a letdown because there's oh, yeah. nothing really to do. But there's ways to get around that. So how did you how do you find yourself to get around that? Because now you're in the biggest oh, yeah. kind well, of that's... now we're home and we're right. really home right. and everyone's home. Yeah. Well oh. in the past, even you know, you come home from the tour, you at least had the, the idea, you know, for good for better or worse, at least you're like, Well, now we got another one coming up in a month, you know. <laughs> So yeah, but, yeah. With this, yeah, coming home and like, okay, well, I'm adjusted, and then it, it not being, yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some definitely long term. You know, there's there's the there's the short term. Those first few weeks of realizing that we couldn't get out, and then sort of long term, like, wow, I, uh, I'm really having a hard time <laughs> making sure yeah. I play the guitar every day for a while, and you know, and yeah, it. it I would say it's definitely grinding harder and harder, you know, as the pandemic goes. Is it easier? Is it easier because, you know, you've been touring with your, with your wife and to have your wife at home. And so you sort of have a bandmate yeah. uh, everywhere to bounce stuff off. Does yeah. that make it easier oh, or harder? It's definitely, it's definitely easier. I, I, I often think about some of our peers and just picturing some of them like being isolated and just like, wow, I, I, how it'd be so hard to be away from, you know, the people that you were creative with and, you know, the fact that Mim and I were kind of together and we could kind of always be talking about, what, you know, making plans, sort of going, th- making decisions, sort of getting perspective about what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's been a lifesaver to me is, you know, the fact that Mim, Mim and I are sort of together and and in the band, just, you know, together through the, through the quarantine. Um, yeah, yeah, probably... The only reason we're able to make get a record done, I guess, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, interestingly enough, the, just just the other day, our ma- our manager sent over sort of a, a mock up of <laughs> of some shows. You know, we could maybe do yeah. it in uh, next like next year. <laughs> uh-huh. but, uh, I don't know. I ha- I have to admit that when I looked at the list, I had a little bit of a had a little bit of a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I don't, like, what, what about I don't it? Was know. Like... I don't know. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it's because we're this far away from it, that it's, it's harder to feel the naive, like, Oh yeah. Touring's fun. You know, <laughs> like the practical part of me is taking over now. It's just like, Oh, driving. Yeah. Well, it is, it is what involved. it is, you know, when you, you tackle stuff when you when you when you get to it, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it's I don't know. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into that and figure out what's going on in my brain that I'm, <laughs> I'm cringing at that because for the longest time I was always excited to see what dates were coming up. But, um, maybe it's because it's been so long; it's kind of daunting. Yeah, well, I'm sure that it feel. I don't know. I'm not in your position, obviously, but you know, I try to. I try things that help me a little bit is just kind of living in the moment and not trying to worry too much about things I can't control in the future and try not to create scenarios of how things might be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, because you you never you you just don't know how things are gonna or will will turn up. Right? Yeah, but and we how things will turn out how you'll show up. You just, you know, you'll show up and you're, you'll do yeah. like amazing work. And I mean, 
I can't wait to hear some material that's that's coming out from you guys that's uh, a result of this um, of this COVID period. I mean, I think that's going to be really interesting. I'm looking forward to that. Well, I'll take a take a listen to the double negative. And yeah, keep keep going in that keep going in that trajectory, and and yeah, that's where we're at with the new one. And, and uh, oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. we work. It's the same. Working with the same producer, engineer, and um, yeah, go go listen to Double Negative. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're no, I'm to, giving it like I'm we're trying to kill everybody. <laughs> 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 like there's not enough danger that everyone has to face these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't um, don't listen if your one... immune system is compromised. <laughs> <laughs> your mental mental oh, immune system has been compromised on, yeah. sound is oh it sounds great you sound great man i wanted to ask you one thing um one one additional thing what was it like to get attention from robert plant that was really wild that was unexpected and it came up kind of yeah we, yeah we he had already recorded it oh no i should actually backtrack we when we worked with steve albini albini had one one time we worked with on a record and he had just gotten back doing a page and plan record. And mm-hmm. he said, you know, in conversation, he was like, yeah, Rob, we were like, yeah, hey, what was it like working with those guys? Huh? And, and uh, he was like, yeah, Robert, Robert's really into new music. You know, he's like, he said, he said, he just, he just kind of grilled Steve the whole time asking about bands. Like, so yeah, oh, cool. I guess Robert, Robert's really into, he, he wants some, yeah, he's into new music. He's, he's a, he's a lifetime lover of i mean that guy didn't give up of everything yeah. i mean yeah no no he just he moves he moves forward he does not sit back yeah. in in his own personal life in his own personal music yeah. life he's not he's not afraid to go do something that he really loves to do because he loves yeah. music yeah so so i he had done that uh, and then um i don't know if, yeah flash forward a few, few years later i was i was in philadelphia with this other band called retribution gospel choir and and we were playing at this convention and somebody from his label came and told somebody from our label or from sub pop, like, Oh, Hey, congratulations on the Robert plant low cover. And like, what, what? <laughs> you know, so they, so they went, <laughs> went to find me and I was like, what? We didn't know that about this. I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, so we went and tracked this guy, you know, from, I don't know, was it rounder or not, not rounder or what, whatever record label the thing came, the, the, whatever. And, and, He's like, yeah, Robert. Robert covered two of your songs, and the record's coming out in a month. <laughs> like, what? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it came out. It's like, wow, that's crazy. You know, of course, you know, the minute you hear that news, you're like, well, let's see how how many how many million copies did that did Allison count? <laughs> yeah, <record?" right. laughs> like, get the calculator. Like, oh, get, okay, the get the calculator after that. I remember, one, I had, yeah. you know, I had to I had to call Mim and have her go on the internet and she was like, is this really happening? Like, she wouldn't look. Like, yeah, they're announcing it. There's a song called Monkey and a song called. Uh, whatever the other one she, he did, but um, so yeah, that that all happened. And really blown away, you know. And he, you know, interviews started coming out where you know he would tell stories about how he came across our music and how much he loved it, and and it's crazy. And and of course, you know, he, he showed up, <laughs> showed up at our show in London, and came backstage, said hello, and and we've we've met with him a couple times, just meeting at shows since then, and it's. Yeah, so it's exactly it's it's everything you'd you'd hope. He's actually a really generous person, you know. Most most stars, I I, I don't blame that they like they want distance from people. They need their privacy, and you know, right. everybody's different. But I don't know for some reason, Roberts figured out like a way to be like very social. He gets done with this show, you know, get done with the show. There's people backstage to meet him. He comes into that room, starts talking to individuals, makes the rounds, and forty minutes later, he's left the room. Everybody in that room is satisfied. Everybody in that room wow. just got da- got no has just got to sit and chat with Robert Plant as if they were sitting in a bar having a drink. He, that's just that's the way he just immediately come up to you like you're hanging out and start telling stories and asking what this about this and this. You oh know? my god, that's fantastic! What did you talk to him about? I I don't remember. I don't remember. I'll see. What did we? <laughs> totally blanked yeah, out yeah. on the whole thing. I mean, you know. 
hey, how's it going? How's your singing going? You know, just just different stuff for the ear. <laughs> just just to try to sound like you're a, a fellow musician, you know. Oh, do you, you remember Led? Do you remember yeah. Led Zeppelin? Hey, you know. <laughs> hey, wait, how's Jimmy doing? You know, you know. You know <laughs> no, you, no, you learn. No, you learn quick. Don't ask those questions. No, no, it's yeah, just, no. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you do, and that and that's something about him. When he come, when you meet him, the way he approaches you, you you're not scrambling for. What's the question I should ask him? Because he's already started it. He's already started it. Yeah. He's either telling, he's either started telling you a story, or he's asking you about something, and you're you're the one having to answer stuff. Yeah, it's 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 really it's pretty magical. But anyway, yeah, he sounds like an extraordinary individual. Really extraordinary. Wow. Yeah, and 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 that's rare. You know, I mean, I've I've worked backstages at shows. You know, Dylan. You know, Bob Dylan gets off his bus and walks ten feet under the stage, and he does a show, and he walks back on the bus, and 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 his his big British, his big burly British bodyguard clears the area. <laughs> you know, right? Nobody, right. And, yeah. that's, and I don't blame him, man. I mean, that's everybody wants to say something to Bob Dylan. Everybody wants to corner him. You know, <clears throat> you know. So so I don't blame him for that. But yeah, Robert somehow find a way found a way to be like, you know what? I'm fine with this, and doesn't. It doesn't pull anything away from me. So, so yeah. Well, it's like, it's, it's as different as there are personalities, the way yeah, that a, a, somebody at that level is going to handle what comes at them. Yeah. And he just, he, he sounds like a, a social person that wants to talk to other people. And I think he recognizes who he is. He recognizes what he does to people and the difference it is of whether you just right. say hello or whether you become, you know, just a, a short conversation. <laughs> I don't know. I think it just, he just recognizes that that's a million bucks to people and, and it's nothing for him to give that away. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's so cool to hear. Wow. Well, thanks Alan for taking the time to, yeah, to hang with me for a little bit and talk to me about, um, about low and about van splaining, which I really love. And I, I sincerely hope that you do more on, um, on that front and as well. And, um, it was just kind of so refreshing and unique. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, All right, well, cool. Yeah. Good yeah. Time. I look forward to <laughs> it's a big subject. You talk forever about it. I could anyway. <laughs> about, uh, about van splaining, yeah, van splaining touring, just ins and yeah. outs of, of, of all that, that, people don't usually see or know what happens and but I, I don't know I think it's as interesting as, as most things I love I like the back the kind of the, the backstage um uh you know right before someone goes on stage no matter routine. what level of perf- yeah what whatever the whatever performer they are and like um I forget which band it was that got you into their little circle oh, yeah, well, of yeah. uh like the this. energy ball Oh yeah, that, what, that was crazy. That's, Who was that? Oh, uh, that's Chelsea. Uh, no, uh, that's uh, a band called Our Girl from from uh, London. Yeah, is that what you're talking yeah, about? The energy that... ball. They're like, oh, okay, hold the ball. Over. Okay, go. Yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah. Low never, yeah, low never does that stuff. <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't even. We don't even have a high. We don't have a high, even a high five. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh crap! It's time to go on stage. All right, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, right. So are you tied with the guys from Trampled on Turtle Trampled by Turtles because yeah. of the Duluth connection? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um uh that's such an interesting connection and just kind of shows just the diversity yeah. of 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 artistic and musical efforts that you're actually even talking to those guys. Yeah. This just blew my mind. I love that. <laughs> Cause I do love the, I, you know, I, I love the, the, the jam bluegrass area. There's so many different kind of offshoots of it these days. And those guys are one of them. And, um, and, uh, you know, I loved your background in blues also, um, the black eyed snakes. I would, I, I love that stuff. And, um, it's just that just the, getting the full spectrum of musical influences and everything was, is, um, is always very interesting to me. Well, I've been lucky. So it's it's a it's a great community and there's enough of an there's just enough of an underdog syndrome here that kind of makes you grit your teeth a little bit harder and be like you know i'm gonna try to get these thing out there anyway you know so so yeah no it's a cool town yeah charlie parr is another artist from here he's kind of more country country Uh blues yeah turtles started here yeah they're all we've known those guys forever and we've done shows i think the first 
and their first West Coast tour was opening for us. <laughs> then I think it just, oh, no it just, kidding. No just kidding. blew up, blew up from there. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was actually right. really fun. It was really, I, I'm actually I'm glad they went on tour. I mean, it was totally going in front of audiences that you know were different from what they the audiences they eventually reached out to. But I, but I think it was yeah. I, know, I thought it was I thought it was cool to. I, I know that I I'm sure there was definitely some fans of ours who were like. You know, I would have thought that this would be cool, but I'm I'm kind of into these guys. <laughs> it's not this is not very yeah, much right. like low, but I like this. Yeah, uh, they're cool. They've had well, you, for them you, too, so. you never know. It's always constantly fascinating the breadth of um, uh, people's musical interests and how everyone has different branches in their own brain about what mm. they're going to accept as as something that they're willing to listen to and give a chance to. Right. I think that's just constantly fascinating. Mm -hmm. it, I fascinate myself in that regard. <laughs> like, How am I listening to this? And then I'm listening to this and I'm seeking out other kinds of influences. And yeah. then what's the band that these guys listen to? It's like, I'm, it's just a never ending process and yeah. it's always fascinating. Yeah. It's always awesome. and 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 when I meet other fans of of a, of a particular band, I want to know what what else they're listening to and why are they listening to something that I don't particularly like. But then we meet in this one place. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's just it's as varied as the human brain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from individual to individual. Yep. Our, our our nurture and our nature. <laughs> Right. So what, what, like what you, what you've, what you've been exposed to yeah. versus what you kind of find out on your own. Is that well, what you're saying? Experience and then general nature, you know, I think, I think as, as humans, we're generally, yeah, we we're attracted to kind of expanding our, our universe. Yeah. We're also pretty, right. pretty new, but we're also really addicted to it. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Mm. Thanks so much. I appreciate it, Alan. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Have a good, have a great weekend. I'll see you. Yeah. You too, buddy. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay, everyone. That was Alan Sparhawk of the band Low. Um, really interesting to note that he talked about how it's hardest to really come home from tour uh, as opposed to being on tour. And I really enjoyed listening to him break it down in terms of how he feels the brain works when you're on tour and you're really excited to be out there and everything's kind of happening sort of fast. And while it's a very subjective uh, phenomenon, of course, for him, it was more about coming home and not having a lot to do. And so maybe it's kind of the post tour uh, depression cycle that uh, he noted is something to uh, to stay on top of and to be aware of. Um, but we did note that it's easier to come home with his uh, to his wife and with his wife that is, uh, who's also his bandmate Mimi, and to have her at home adds to a level of normalcy and less of that sort of excitement let down from um, being on tour. And I was also psyched to hear that. He, they've been working on some new materials, so that's really cool. And um, also loved hearing him talk about his uh, encounter with Robert Plant and how um, obviously Plant uh, had uh, covered two low songs on his 2010 album Band of Joy and what that meant to Alan and how he ultimately encountered uh, Plant and had a conversation with him. I loved hearing how Alan... Uh, approached his audience in terms of Lowe's traditionally quieter and slower brand of music versus uh, serving up his his type of music to diverse audiences. And I, he said, uh, well, you know, if you can sit through punk, well, can you sit through this? And I thought that was, uh, that kind of encapsulates Alan's really uh, very bold and um, brash attitude with his own music and how he is just simply unafraid to put anything out there. And I think that's really uh, what my main takeaway was from, uh, from talking to Alan. I hope you really enjoyed this interview with Alan Sparhawk of Low. Uh, we got plenty more coming up. And uh, if you'd like to support this podcast, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash roadcasepod or follow us on socials 
at Roadcase Pod on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks again to all of you awesome people for listening. And thanks again to Alan Sparhawk for being here on this episode of Roadcase. Thanks again so much for listening. And I'd like to encourage everyone to get involved with Roadcase. You can do so in a number of different ways. You can email me at info at roadcasepod.com with questions, comments, and even suggestions for guests. Or you can follow us on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We're at Roadcase Pod. And we have a YouTube channel called Roadcase Podcast. And if you are able to and like to support Roadcase, we have a Patreon site at patreon.com slash roadcasepod. And of course, you can subscribe to this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And if you could please rate and review the podcast while you're there, that would be great. So I want to thank Waltzer for this awesome theme music that we have. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to Roadcase. We have a lot of great episodes coming up, so I'll see you on down the road. <laughs>